Hello, I'm Rob, and today I'm going to show you how to get into orbit in Kerbal Space Program. Put my SAS on, and I launch full throttle. Take my SAS off around 50 odd meters per second. At 60 meters per second, I initiate the turn, just a slight nudge to the right hand side. Just uh, make sure it stays there. There we go. Don't put your SAS back on, just leave it off, and gravity will gradually pull you over. Reduce my throttle to two thirds when you're in the thick, soupy lower atmosphere. If you're going too fast, you're just pushing against all the, uh, the air and you're just losing efficiency. So I just throttle back. And as long as you're around 300, between 7,000 and 10,000, you're just sort of on track. But it depends on your shift when you just have to balance your own throttle. You used to just shoot straight up to 10,000 meters and just flip over to 45 degrees. But with the aerodynamics the way they are now, more often than not, I find that your rockets will just spin out of control. So I found this is an efficient way of getting into orbit. So we're getting to the stage now where we want to ditch those external tanks and engines. I always like to look back when I do this because it always looks quite cool, especially when you know the more you've got to ditch, the uh, more impressive it looks, especially when they crash into each other. There they go. Well, don't think Jebediah liked that sound. He was happy. But he's a pro. Anyway, we're about to head into our map screen, but I'll see you there. Hello and welcome to the map screen. You have your cursor over the Apple Apps a marker, you press the B button. It keeps the information on the screen for you. You can see your curve and Apple Apps altitude, and you can see the time to Apple Apps, which both of which should be climbing, or at least above 50 seconds in the case of time to Apple Apps. Pretty much just want to gain as much lateral speed now as possible because um, the more we do now the less we have to do when it comes to actually inserting into orbit. I like to focus on the actual planetary body when I'm in the mass screen it's just, just easier especially when you've got the, the Apple apps moving across the screen there you can just sort of spin around the planet and keep up with it which is a lot easier than if you're focused on craft or ship or whatever. So when you're happy, cut your engines. The atmosphere, I think to be in space, you have to be over 70,000 meters. So there we are, cut the engines. And next thing we're going to do is go into the maneuver nodes, which is always fun and fiddly. They've actually, to be honest with you, they've done a pretty good job with the control system, with the, with the control pad. Um, I haven't got too many complaints. It's just a case of getting used to it. If you get stuck for what the controls are, just hover the cursor over the little question mark you can see on the right hand side there, and you can search through the control bindings. So I've got my SAS on, and I'm just going to set up a maneuver node now. So basically, what the maneuver node is going to tell us, it's going to simulate um, what you want to do. So in this case, we want to burn our engines in the direction that we're actually traveling in to give us more speed and eventually insert us into orbit. So you drag your prograde vector. There you go. And when you see the periaps come up, you'll see the apple apps and periaps flip around. That's got you into orbit and you can fiddle around a bit and get it perfect to your liking. It's not too important to get it you know, perfectly circularized. It's just however OCD you are about these things. Again, you can press the B button over them to uh, oh, I suppose to uh, keep the information on the screen. 
So you can see that we've got an estimated burn time and we have uh, the time to the node. So we align ourselves with the node. And if you've got, say you've got a, a burn time of <clears throat> six seconds, you want to start your burn maximum throttle around about three seconds. So you're doing half the burn before you reach the node and half the burn after you've reached the node. <clears throat> so I need to cough. So I'll line up with the, um, the node vector thing before I start warping. If you want to time warp properly, rather than just do the physical time warp, you have to actually physically go up to the top left of the screen with the cursor. Bear in mind, you don't want to overshoot. Which, to be fair, I always do. But in Kerbal Space Program, failure is always an option and always hilarious. So when you reach your burn time, you want to just go full throttle and you'll see your meters per second bar reduce. And when you've only got a small burn to do like this, it's probably best not to do full throttle, to be honest, because as you see, I've completely overshot. But we're in orbit, and to be honest with you, I'll, I'll take that. That's fine. And that's how you do it. And it's the same principle on pretty much every other planetary body in the game. Now we can just admire the sun sets behind us. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Hope this has been helpful. Take care.